go ahead. Hi, everyone. My name is Julio Capo Jr. and I am the an associate professor of history and the public history coordinator here at FIU um, and the deputy director of the Wilsonian Public Humanities Lab. Um, and we're so thrilled to, to have you all here join us. We're going to talk a little bit about these incredible internship opportunities we have at the WPHL and at FIU at large. Um, and just to briefly give you a sense before Enrique and, and Katie take over, um, and we have two guests from our, our partner institutions here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about this grant. So this is a three year uh, Mellon Foundation funded grant um, called Community Data Curation. Um, and what it does is it finds the WPHL at FIU partnering with eight different community partners um, rooted in this idea of decolonizing the archives and how we can make uh, access to knowledge um, much more equitable, right, towards a, a vision of greater social justice. So how do we democratize uh, uh, knowledge production and archives, um, preservation? This is a part of doing um, purchasing new equipment, conducting new arc, creating new archives by doing oral history projects, um, and working very closely with, uh, with the great work that's already being done at the local level. How can we help support it um, and help highlight all the great work that's being done? Um, so that's just the gist of it. With this being said, we have um, a number of great internships, um, and Enrique will, will talk about that. Yes, so just to go over a little bit more detail before we open it up, we really want to hear any questions you all may have more than anything. Um, so yeah, like Julio mentioned, a great introduction to what our community data creation internship is, all funded through the Mellon grants, and it really gives students the opportunity to do some really impactful uh, work, you know. So um, a little bit more about our grant. Oh, right over here. Hold on. Well, yeah, so like Julio mentioned, oh, there we go. There's a little bit of a lag. Okay, so Julio already kind of summed everything up pretty great, uh, but just to go over a few key details, it is a two semester internship. So starting in spring 2022 and going through summer 2022 as well. Okay, and it will be continuing after that. So if you love your internship, you know, tell your friends about it because we'll be continuing uh, for the next few years, actually. Um, you will be getting a, a $2,500 stipend paid hourly, uh, which is incredible. Um, you'll be conducting oral histories, digitizing museum assets, and, and uh, this position is also open to graduate or undergraduate students. It's grad preferred, but we are open to undergraduate students, you know, 100%. Um, to apply, once you, you know, you hear from our community partners today, or if you have any questions, well, to apply, you can go to careers.fiu.edu, the FIU Careers Portal, and you're going to use an individual job ID depending on which um, community partner you'd like to intern with. Okay, the deadline for most of our internships is November 1st, with one exception that I'll go over. And if you have any questions at all after this, we're going to be answering questions throughout most of this. But if you have any questions afterwards, feel free to email wphladmin at fiu.edu, and uh, we will get back to you ASAP. Okay, so like I mentioned, if you're planning on applying to any of these um, community partners, any of these internships, um, depending on who you would like to work with, you have to apply individually, okay? So if you wanna to apply to work with the World Aid Museum or the African American Research Library and Cultural Center, you have to apply to them individually, okay? So these are the job IDs for every single one of the actual um, job postings on the career website. And we also sent it out on, on our newsletter Okay, so if you're not subscribed to our newsletter while everyone's talking, I'll also send the link. Um, but it's also up on our Instagram and our Facebook and Twitter. So follow us there as well. Uh, we're starting a TikTok as well soon. So make sure to follow that. Um, but you'll see all of the job ID numbers here. All of these internships are closing on November 1st. Okay, so you have a few weeks to apply and get everything together. Um, but we also have one more um, that is happening with the Historic Ward Rooming House. Okay. So this one is closing soon. It's closing on October 20th. So um, if you're planning on, on applying to work with the Historic Ward Rooming House, this is the job ID. Um, and we've done a few intern we've done a few events with them. Uh, Jazz under a simple tree. I know I've seen, I see a few familiar faces who have come to those events. Um, but hi the Historic Ward Rooming House is pretty much an amazing gallery in Overtown um, that houses black, amazing black art. Right now, it's got an amazing exhibition of, um, of um, Langston Hughes uh, poems and Jacob Lauren's work uh, um, um, related to the Great Migration. So really make sure you come out and check that out. Come out to our next uh, oral history collection there, uh, our Jazz Under a Simple Tree happening on October 30th. Okay, so that's happening. That's coming up soon. It's going to be themed, you know, uh, since Halloween is coming up nearby. So make sure to come out to that. But with that, I'll turn it on over back to Julio and Katie. 
Um, well, I guess Katie and I will do quick intros for ourselves. I didn't introduce myself. So my name is Enrique Rizal. I'm the uh, program manager here at the Wilsonian Public Humanities Lab, uh, primarily working with this grant, with the Community Data Curation Grant, um, helping our community partners get these interns, um, creating oral history initiatives. I work with Katie, you know, um, to digitize part of their archive. So I'll pass it on over to Katie. She's like my partner in crime in all this. Um, so I'll pass it on over to Katie for a quick intro. Thank you for that, Enrique. Um, like you said, my name is Katie Coldiron, and like Enrique, I was also hired specifically to work on the Community Data Curation Grant. I'm an archivist. Um, I have a master's in library science, and so I was brought on specifically to handle the archival side of the work we're doing. Um, I, um, as prospective interns, um, we'll be seeing a lot of each other, and I'm coordinating with, you, with each of the partners individually to kind of tailor training for each institution's interns because our institutions are very, very diverse, and some of them have archivists on staff, like Afua Ferdinand, who's here with us today from the African American Research Library and Cultural Center. She's an archivist, and, and some of our institutions don't. So um, it's all very tailor made to, to best fit the partners' needs. Perfect. Thank you so much. And then um, just a, a quick intro. We also do have a few of our community partners here. Um, Hulu, do you want to give them a, a quick introduction? Go ahead, if you want. Um, do you want to go ahead? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead. Okay, so uh, first we have, first up, we have Andrew Ruffner from the World AIDS Museum, one of our community partners, Afua Ferdinand, also from the African American Research Library and Cultural Center. And last but not least, we have Alan Kett, from the Museum of Graffiti. Okay, so those are just three of our amazing community partners. We have a lot more as well that, uh, that I put up on the screen, but we're super happy to have them here with us to talk a little bit about their cultural institutions, their museums, and uh, the work that they are gonna be doing with these interns. So I'll start it off with Andrew. Andrew, if you'd like to do a little bit of an intro for the World Aid Museum, then we'll go to Afua, and then we'll go to Alan, and then we'll kick it off with some questions, okay? Sure, wonderful. Well, hey, everybody. Great to uh, meet you virtually, at least. Um, uh, uh, as I said, my name is Andy Ruffner. I am the Director of Education and Programming for the World AIDS Museum and Educational Center. We're located in Fort Lauderdale up on um, Sunrise Boulevard between uh, Federal Highway and the beach. And we're in the, uh, the building is in the Holiday Park. Uh, it's called the Art Serve Building. So if you've been up here, uh, you might have uh, been to this. There are uh, several cultural institutions in the building, including the Stonewall National Museum and Archives, which is another one of the locations. Uh, this museum was put together in the early 2000s. It's, it launched around 2008. It incorporated as a nonprofit in 2011. And then it opened its doors to the public on, in 2014. Um, we were up in Wilton Manors and we moved to this current location last year. Uh, it was started by a support group of HIV positive uh, men uh, who were noticing what was happening with increasing HIV rates in the uh, late first decade of the 2000s, the aughts, I guess, as we're gonna call them. And uh, they were concerned about that. And they felt like people really didn't understand the history of what we had been through uh, with HIV from its beginnings back in 1981 and wanted to chronicle that history and go out and educate the community. So that's how the museum actually started. They began collecting memorabilia and different articles to uh, share in presentations that they did out in the community. And that's what launched it. Uh, the first major piece that we got was a jersey from Magic Johnson, who um, was really important in the story of HIV AIDS because he uh, came out publicly about his HIV status really early on back in 1991, um, which was a real watershed moment um, in the history of HIV uh, for that. So uh, we, in addition to the programming that happens here inside the actual four walls of the museum, we do a lot of remote programming, especially since we've opened up the um, uh, a lot of our programming due to COVID uh, to provide it around the country. So uh, we do monthly programs. Um, we have a community dialogue series uh, that we do uh, 
talking about different issues related to the history of HIV or what's happening in HIV currently. Um, we also have a film series where we talk about films that have uh, represented HIV in them. Um, uh, we have a spotlight interview series for individual interviews with people about their stories and histories around that as well. So what we're going to be working on, um, we're real excited about this grant because we have been um, really uh, working on professionalizing and um, coming more into the, the realm of a full-fledged honest to God museum um, with good museum practices. Um, Katie's been helping us with a lot with setting up our um, cataloging and archiving of our materials um, in preparation for having uh, and welcoming an intern to work with us on that. We have a lot of um, material here uh, in terms of recorded oral histories already. We want to absolutely expand that for not only people who are living with HIV, but other people who may have worked in HIV or their lives have been touched by it in some way. So we'll be expanding those things as well as making um, our collections of materials here accessible to people via our website um, and other um, locations uh, with that. So that's a little bit about us. Uh, we do a lot of work out in the community. We're a small operation. It's uh, we, right now we have two paid staff, myself and our executive director, Dr. Raquel Lopes. Uh, we've been here since uh, late, uh, Raquel started uh, here in late 2018. And um, we had, um, and then I came on board in January of 2019. Uh, we have an active volunteer pool of about 20, 25 people that really help us um, both virtually around the country as well as locally to produce um, the different programs that we do. So uh, how did I do uh, PHL? Is there anything else that I need to, uh, to say about that I'm missing in that? I think that's great. Cool. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Andy. I just want to throw out a few things um, before we, we get to Um, uh, I, I want to say, one, incidentally, uh, two of our esteemed guests today happen to be from Broward County uh, cultural institutions. Um, so, but incidentally, most of our, our internships are housed in Miami-Dade County. Uh, three of our, our internships uh, are in Broward and, and the other six are, are in fact in Miami-Dade, um, which is, so, you know, our students are from all over South Florida. So this is a really great way of navigating different aspects of South Florida's uh, history culture and politics for sure. Um, and the other thing that we we didn't really get to talk to, but just throw it out there as we kind of hear all these great things, um, that this also provides an opportunity for those who might be interested in it um, and possibly getting a course credit for uh, the work you do. In addition, should you want to, you can enroll in a public history internship as part of this program um, and receive uh, up to three credits towards um, your your coursework um, through, through a public history. Uh, you don't have to though, right? Um, this is just for those people who are interested in doing the public history track um, or possibly receiving elective credit for your, your curriculum. Um, so just keep this in mind as well as if this is of interest to you, that's something we can talk about certainly more. Afua. Okay. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Afua Ferdinand. I am the archivist for Broward County Library, so that includes the Bienes um, Museum, as well as the Broward County Historical Archives, and of course the African American Research Library and Cultural Center, um, where the internship would be. And so the African American Research Library and Cultural Center, or also known as ARLIC, um, was founded October 26, uh, 2002. So next year we are coming upon our 20th anniversary. And so we're very excited about that. Um, we are doing an oral history project um, to celebrate uh, black librarianship um, for ARLIC. And um, so that's underway and that's something that we might have the interns work on as well. Um, we hold multiple collections that document African-American history and culture, Caribbean history and culture, and West and Central African history and culture. So we hold painting sculptures. Um, we have a sizable rare book collection as well, and then also a manuscript collection and archives. And so um, the intern will also work on helping to digitize the Niara Sudarkasa collection. 
and Niar Siddharkasa was a professor and anthropologist. And she um, was also local to Fort Lauderdale. She was born in Fort Lauderdale. She was the first female president of Lincoln University and also the first African-American professor of anthropology at NYU. And so she's a very noted local figure. And so um, that collection is about 300 uh, Hollinger boxes. And so it's, that's gonna be a large collection to digitize. So that's something the intern will be mainly working on here along with oral histories. Um, and because we are having our 20th, there may be other things coming in between that to just to help to celebrate um, the anniversary of Arlick. Um, Arlick was founded by Samuel F. Morrison. And we also have his collection in the archives and he's still very much active in the community. So who knows, the intern might meet <laughs> Mr. Morrison at some point. Um, but that's just some background information on Arlick and what the intern would be doing here. Perfect. Thank you so much, Afua. And then I'll pass it on over to Alan and then we'll get into your questions. Hey, Alan. Hi there. Hi, everybody. Uh, so my name is Alan Kett. I am the co-founder of the Museum of Graffiti. The Museum of Graffiti is located in the Wynwood section of Miami. We opened in December of 2019. And so we're about to celebrate our second year of operation being in business. Uh, the museum is the first museum of its type in the world, meaning that we're the only institution that's sort of celebrating graffiti as an art form anywhere. And so it's really important for us to be here in Wynwood. That is a bit of a hub for graffiti art and mural art and uh, all types of public art. And it's why we strategically decided to be in this neighborhood. The museum tells the story of uh, 50 years of this art form dating back to its birth in New York City. And so we are sort of keepers of this sort of knowledge and of a lot of ephemera and material. I have been uh, studying, participating and collecting all kinds of objects and stories and material uh, for my entire adult life. And some of those things are here on display at the museum. Since we've opened up, we have found that there is a lack of information and of oral histories uh, within our community of artists globally. And so we've been working diligently for the past year to sort of capture some of those stories and uh, preserve those. And so the grant and this, um, the work that we're going to be doing together is really going to help us capture more of those stories and get more information that's never been captured before, in particular with South Florida and in Miami. Uh, no one's really turned the lens on sort of the, the pioneers of this art form here, or, you know, the makers, whoever those people are. And so we're very excited to take on that work. The museum's archive, which is very small, uh, consists of magazines, photo material, paper material, that so far have been donated from some South Florida based artists, as well as pioneering New York artists. We have never touched that material. It's basically sitting, waiting for the opportunity to process and intake this uh, material properly. Uh, it is not a tremendous amount of material, but definitely more than we know how to, to process and handle. And so, we are looking forward to this partnership to learn how to properly intake that and um, digitize and store and then present it back to the public in the future. And so we have plenty of great work. Uh, we have a pretty cool building here in Woodwood. We're surrounded by murals and by artists all the time. For this upcoming second year anniversary, we are, uh, you know, creating new exhibitions and activating new murals, uh, not only on our building, but also throughout the neighborhood. And so the intern that works with us is going to have sort of a, a ground seat or, you know, looking at a neighborhood that is very dynamic, filled with artists, working with materials that are very unique uh, in the world, sort of very um, underground, so to speak, uh, even though this is a very popular art form. 
and and help us you know preserve the stories of these living artists that haven't been treated as artists but we know that they have a great community value uh and so yeah so we're very excited to uh to to work together with uh some lucky intern somewhere in miami thank you thank you so much to our three guests I also just want to add that they are, if you visit the actual locations, not just these three guests, but all of our guests, but all of their um, locations are the coolest places ever. Katie and I have been visiting them and they're so interesting. Even if you um, if you decide not to apply for whatever reason, visit these institutions because they are absolutely incredible to just like walk around and learn. Um, but I will open it up for any questions. So if anybody has any questions about the internship, about a specific um, community partner, anything, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask or put it in the chat if um, you're unable to unmute yourself. We'll give you a few seconds. It could also be about the pro if you're interested in the internship or what that would look like or the application mm -hmm. process. Yeah, any questions at all? What we had for breakfast? <laughs> Hi, my name is Emanuela. Um, I have a general question about the internship. What would the hours look like on a weekly basis um, for someone who applies and gets in? That is a great question. So that's something that you, you're going to work out with whatever community partner that you're associated with that you, that you get selected for. But it would be about 20 hours a week uh, based on a, 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 student, um, a student schedule. Okay, thank you. It would also be a max of 164 hours in the semester, by the way. So you, know, you wouldn't go over 164 hours. So you'd be you'd be working it out kind of like based on what works for you and your community partner. Thank you. I should also just note that in, in light of the circumstances we find ourselves in, you could also speak to each community partner about um, the possibility of doing some of this work um, if, if needed. Uh, possible. I mean, that is depending on each partner's need. Um, you know, all this work will take place on site, um, but there might be opportunities to do some things right off site if that's necessary. So that there's there's kind of a little bit of flexibility depending on each cultural institution partner's needs. Um, but that would be a question that you would have at the at the interview process with them. Um, so it really is kind of tailor made that way. Totally. Uh, Tab Tabithia, I think I saw you with your hand raised. Maybe we we answered your question. Um, you did actually. I was going to inquire, like, if the individual is interested but unable to go physically to this to these um, sites though, due to high COVID numbers, would that be a possibility? But you answered um, my question. That would um, be a matter between the um, student and the partner, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It's great. Yeah, and, we're, and we're monitoring, you know, COVID numbers to make sure that you know that we keep our interns as safe as possible. That's the number one priority for us and for all of our community partners. Right. It's great to hear your voice, Tabitha. That's exactly right. I think that is, you know, you would have to, these are large, these are meant to be in person, um, uh, right? But that is that there would be some flexibility, perhaps depending on the cultural institution. But um, as far as, as there, we can anticipate that any of these would be fully online, but we will continue monitoring the, the situation as best needed. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Valeria? Feel free to unmute yourself or write in the chat. Hi, hi. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. Um, so my name is Valeria. I'm very interested in one of these positions, especially the Museum of Graffiti one. Hi, Alan. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to know um, if this is tailored towards. I can't remember what I read um, when I first got the email, but is it tailored towards seniors or already graduating, um, like alumni? Great question. Great question. So um, we are we it's open to undergrad students and for graduate students, um, graduates preferred, but we are um, still accepting applicants um, for undergrad, like advanced undergrads and totally mm -hmm. will be, um, you know, considered. So don't be discouraged if you're still an undergrad. We're, we're totally accepting those applications. OK, got it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. But to the last part of that question, you do have to be enrolled at FIU. So that yes. is it yes. upon graduation and that's it's no longer eligible. Yeah. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, uh, Simone, I see your hand up. Uh, yeah, um, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, so 
when I when I was signing up for this info session, I also noticed that there were others, like other other partners, like the Miami Jewish Museum. I probably got that name wrong, but um, like, like we're like, are we gonna get information about it, like at this meeting? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So, um. If you're signed up for our newsletter, um, we sent out a little bit of information on every single one of our partners. Um, let me show you real quick. So if you haven't, if you weren't signed up, we're also going to be posting more on, on social media, just about specific information for each one of our partners. But mm -hmm. I can also forward you if you didn't get a chance to check it out. But let me just open it real quick. Hold on. Um, WPHL newsletter. Well, Enrique is doing that. Um, just to clear anything up, um, our eight partners are, of course, Graffiti, World AIDS Museum, and ARLAC, but also the Jewish Museum of Florida, Historic Hampton House, Stonewall National Museum and Archive, um, St. Law, St. Law Haitian Neighborhood Center, number eight is... And Vizcaya. And Vizcaya Museum and Gardens, yes. Thank you, Julia. Of course. So that is, if you have any questions about any of the specific ones, and this kind of came up or was suggested earlier, uh, of course, we couldn't have a, someone from every institution, we would have a, a much longer info session. So, um, but we're happy to answer any specific questions. Each, each position um, is tailor-made by the, the, the cultural institution, by our partners. Um, so if there's a specific need or, or prerequisite or something, it's listed in that job description. Um, like if there's a language requirement, like, like for San La, for example, um, a Haitian Creole is preferred, for example, but I mean, like that is the very specific things that might be, but they're, 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 they're pretty open, right? And, and, the, and I, as someone suggested this earlier, the possibility, right, that if you're interested in more than one, you can apply to more than one, right? And see, because I mean, they are in fact, uh, positions that are, that are essentially hired, right? So um, if you don't get your, your top choice or your second choice, that you have the possibility of applying for two or three or as, as you see, you, you know, you see fit. Simone, yeah. do you have a specific question about the Jewish Museum of Florida, for example? Uh, no, I just listed that off because I noticed that you don't have rep, like, like I noticed that there weren't representatives for all of them and I was just wondering about that. Okay, sure. Yeah. Thank you. And then also just, just to come in really, really quickly, I also wanted to say that if you, hold on, let me pull this up, that if after this inter info session, if you have friends maybe that are interested or if you forget like a specific job ID, it's also like permanently up on our Instagram. So if you follow us on Instagram, um, we have a little highlight over here that you can just flip through and it's got um, all of the the information for the, um, for the in, um, internship. And then it's got the job IDs there, you know, that you can just look that up uh, pretty easily up on the, um, up on uh, the careers website. But yeah, so we have technically nine community partners. So I mentioned earlier that um, the historic ward rooming house, this one closes a little bit earlier. So if you're interested in working with that, that one's closing uh, next week, I believe on the 20th. I see Dominique has um, your hand up. Hi, Dominique. Good to see you. We're here. You. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for this info session. I just had a few questions. Um, one in particular about the application process, what we could expect from that and, you know, the interviews and also for the hours for, you know, per week, I, I, I believe you mentioned it's 20 hours per week. Is that the maximum or the minimum hours that a student can work? Yeah, so that's a great question. It would be 20 uh, maximum per week, you know, based on a student schedule. But it would also be 164 hours maximum, you know, per semester. So you'd be working with your community partner uh, to decide, you know, when you'd be connecting with them, when you'd be working, so you, that you don't go over that 164 hours. So to receive the $2,500 stipend, the, the full amount, you would complete the 164 hours. Okay. Great. And would you mind going over the application process? Uh, yeah, what, yeah. What Hulu, I, Hulu, do you want to go over that a little bit more? Maybe. So, so it's done through through um, FIU's HR, um, right? So human resources, and it's gonna. It's as if you were applying for a regular job in this capacity, right? For any other job, um, it's gonna ask you for um, some for some basic information, and then um, which I, I don't have in front of me, unfortunately. But that is uh, after after the completion of that online uh, that online submission. 
um, it goes to a committee who will then forward um, top candidates that best meet the, the requirements of each you know, cultural institution, the partner, and the partner makes the hire themselves, right? That is through an interview with, um, with the candidate. So it'll, there'll, be one, there'll be at least one interview um, with, with the cultural institution, with the partner, um, who will ultimately make the hiring decision, right? And, right with and, and part of well, the you know WPHL staff would be um, in in that meeting as well. Um, but that way, that each cultural institution makes their own decisions. Okay, great, thank you. Did I answer that? Yeah. Yes, you did. Thank you. It's good to see your uh, to hear you and see. Your, it's been uh, it's great to see so many familiar faces and and to. It makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, I also just put in the chat a direct link to um, kind of like a web version of the email that's got a little bit more information about every single one of the community partners, what they do, their goals, um, the job IDs, um, links to apply. So you can just directly click that link and, and it'll take you straight straight to that email. So you can share that with your friends. And like I said, we'll be posting more on social media. So feel free to follow us so, uh, to get some more info between now and the, and the first. Um, but I'll do a quick last call for questions. Any Anything else? Any other questions you might have? Speak now or forever hold your peace. I could clarify something really quick. Yeah. Um, that might not be super clear. Um, so within the community data creation Mellon grant itself, the eight partners that I listed are our eight partners for that specific grant. However, as you, um, as Enrique mentioned, we are partners with the Historic Ward Rooming House, which um, is the building that it's an art gallery um, for an organization called Hampton Art Lovers, headed by Mr. Christopher Norwood. And that internship, it, um, well, it does close earlier um, because um, Chris is interested in having an intern around for um, Art Basel. Um, it's going to be the same type of work. Um, I just wanted mm -hmm. to, to clear that up really quick if, in case there was any confusion because I know I listed off eight partners originally. Yeah, that's a great point. Same exact uh, workload and, and uh, scope of work, just uh, um, a sooner deadline. It just won't, what, what that one I think especially means is that it's going to be not exactly, that is the ward internship won't be aligned exactly with the semester period. It'll just be kind of, it'll begin mm -hmm. mid semester and essentially end mid semester. Just be mindful of that as well. Um, uh, and if there, if there are any questions beyond this, right, that is especially if there's, uh, if you're interested in doing a public history internship, for example, that 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 can uh, you know simultaneously with this, you enroll through FIU the same way you'd enroll for anything, and you would still you still receive your stipend. All of it kind of just works, but that is you could receive elective credit towards a public history internship, um, up to three credits for it. Um, and I'm trying to think what else we kind of. I think that's that's kind of the gist of it. If there are no other questions or clarifications that we could help with. Quick clarification, um, the internship she just mentioned that helps for the Art Basel, is that link separate? Is that application um, separate? And can we get that link so we could just go directly to that website? It's a distinct ID, a job app. Each one, each application has its own distinct like job ID, right, Enrique? Yes. Um, and that one has, um, uh, so, so that one is due in, in about a week, in eight days. Uh, and that one, you could look at the, the job ID here. Um, and she is putting it up. Yeah. Each one has a job ID. So the, the one for the ward is 524104. Um, when you go to careers.fiu.edu, you just type that in. Um, and each, again, each, each uh, internship has its own. So um, Arlick, for example, is 524089. Um, so you would just type that in and go directly. I mean, there's also a search button when you go to, to, to FIU careers, um, but this will get, this is even more direct if you just use that ID number. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. Thank and you so much. You click, no problem. And if you click the, the last link that I sent, um, it's got all of that information that you can access anytime as well. And it's up on our Instagram if if you uh, forget the, the specific job ID as well. So yeah, you just log into careers.fiu.edu and search up the, the job ID and it'll be, it'll take you straight to it. Let me just say one more thing, if that's, um, oh, uh, Katie, I think you were about to say something. I didn't mean to. Oh, oh no, go ahead, Julio. Um, I just want to stress how uh, incredibly unique this opportunity is um, to have an, uh, to have this opportunity to work really closely um, with these incredible community partners, um, while also getting uh, 
really powerful and important and marketable skills in this in this job market, whether it's digitization, whether it's doing oral histories, whether it's doing uh, museum curation, or whether it's doing like you know, becoming a docent, because each each partner will have different needs, and you'll be doing a lot of public facing work that would help diversify your own portfolio as you move into the job market, whatever that looks like moving forward. It's really hard to to predict what this looks like. Um, but these are incredibly important hands-on skills that you would be receiving as a product of this internship. Um, I, I know that these, these relationships are really important. They were for me as an, you know, when I was an undergrad, the internships I did um, were really important for me. Uh, they are, these are, are really, uh, uh, they're, they're mutually beneficial, right? That is, a, this is not like one of those internships where you're just kind of like doing work for nothing. <laughs> that is that you find that this kind of space is really meant to, to value your labor and your time. Um, and that all our partners are committed to that vision as are we. Um, which is a, a really important thing to kind of just note. So if there are any questions beyond that, feel free to ask us. Um, and um, just to um, throw um, something in here as well, um, echoing everything Julio and Enrique have said as well. Um, but um, if you're interested in learning more a little about like each individual partner, I highly recommend um, going to their websites, but also feel free to ask us anything because we dialogue with all of them constantly and know a bit more about some of their specific projects as each partner, as I'm sure you could see from what Andy, Afu, and Alan have, have contributed. They have specific goals in mind with how, like what their intern would be working on specifically. Um, and I think maybe me mentioning Art Basel might have um, intrigued someone. So um, yeah, feel free to, you know, if you're curious about, you know, these individual projects, please feel free to ask us. Yeah, totally. Well, if, if that answers everyone's questions, we'll, we'll leave it off right over there. Thank you all so much for joining. Uh, tell your friends, uh, tell everybody, shout it from the rooftops. Like Julio said, this is an incredible, incredible opportunity to do some really, really impactful work and preserve, you know, oral histories and preserve histories from the local community with, you know, incredible community partners. So please don't miss out. Uh, don't let your friends miss out. Okay. And uh, if you have any questions, you can email. I'll put the email right there at WPHL admin. And we'll, uh, we'll give you, uh, we'll give you an email reply back. Or also, you know, I'll put my personal email in there, in there as well. Okay, you can email any one of us. Uh, but thank you so much. Um, and we will uh, talk to you all soon and hope to see you back as interns. Thanks, okay. everyone. And thanks and thank to, you our to our partners. partners. Yes, thank you for showing up. Thanks. Thank you. Good day, everyone. Thanks for having thanks us. Everybody. Bye.